here we are in, uh, on a breezy afternoon in northwest Colorado, in Hayden, Colorado. Uh, Hayden rests at about 63 to 6400 feet in elevation. A lot of people don't know that we can grow apples here, or any other fruits for that matter, but we do. Um, these particular apples were, are our own. They were planted by my grandfather maybe 30 or 40 years ago. The neat thing about most of the apples in this area is they're heirloom. These aren't your typical varieties that you see in the store. But they're a hardier apple than a lot of them that I find around here. And I, you know, I suspect that they were brought here by the settlers and those people that have found in Haiti. A lot of these trees have been around here most of my life. And uh, or new ones have sprung up from them. So that's a really neat thing. Um, we a few years ago, we, when we moved into this house, we had these apple trees. We really wanted to do everything we could to, uh, to utilize them as a resource, and, and we enjoyed doing some stuff. Um, we have made some juice from them, and we tried to make some cider and nearly broke uh, my wife's uh, kitchen implement. So we, we did a lot of research, and uh, we looked at many different presses, prices of presses, types of presses, construction um, and we settled on this. This is a, a uh, press we found on the internet. One particular company makes them. Um, I do believe they're fashioned back east in the Pennsylvania area. I'm not sure exactly. I, I can find that information for their series. Um, what was important to, to me was that it was a, it was a very robust construction. You see that this thing's it's metal, it's tough, and I didn't realize it then. It's very important to have something with some strength and some sturdy because we do put some pressure on here. Um, stainless steel plate, wooden uh, wooden barrel here, and we built this. See, what's important is that this thing wasn't ready to rock and roll when we bought it. It came, we wanted to press out, and had to do a lot of work. You've got to seal the wood. Um, you've got to construct a bunch of this and put this together. You need to get a, a food grade sealer for it. Um, as you can see, that this is a four gallon bucket, so it's not quite as tall as a five gallon bucket. And uh, this bucket fits under here pretty nicely. We built this um, to get us up off the ground so this would drain in there. You see, we've got to kind of fashion a little funnel to get in there. Some of the juice used to run back behind it. We've done some things there. And you'll notice when we're pressing on this thing, sometimes I'll stand up on the box and get a good crank on this guy. But anyway, um, really nice press. Uh, they're, they're not cheap, but they're, they're worth it if you're going to do any kind of volume. Um, with this, we also purchased a, 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 a uh, traditional hand-powered grinder, and it's more of a chipper. Um, they, they chip a pretty good-sized piece of apple. You can run it through a couple of times. You don't get a very fine grind, and they're, it's a little harder to press. You don't get quite as many apples as you do with some of the stuff we're constructing now. Um, one of the other things that we put together, we found something similar to this on the internet where a lot of folks making apples had, had gotten a garbage grinder and uh, they were running their apples through garbage grinders in many different configurations. Um, once again, we built the, the table to, to pick it up off the ground using another four gallon bucket. Um, the hose goes right in there. Uh, you can see we've got some apples in there now. It creates it into a nice apple puree. It's uh, it, it's very fine and produces about 30% more more juice using it that way. But as you can see, that it doesn't take long for it to oxidize. That's all right. It gives it a little brown color, but that's okay. Um, we've just taken a little time to make this video. So anyhow, um, as you can see, we've got that up off the ground. On the side, we we installed a a nice uh, switch just to be able to turn it on and off um, once we feed our apples and we'll get on to that here in just a bit so um, over here even further one of the things oh back to the back of the press um, something that's very important is we also made discs we do a particular style of pressing once again after lots of research on the internet everybody does it differently but we create patties of uh, of applesauce about that thick and this these things step on each layer and you'll see that as we press we'll put another one in and put another one of these on top. Um, these separate the cakes and it has a tendency to just be a little more efficient. Um, so we created we we cut these out so they fit made holes in them so you can put your fingers in there and suck it out of there because they really do press out of there and suck it out of there. So we created those and we sealed them again with food grade too. It's always good to have a cap. Let me 
issue with that where you, you don't want to leave your apples and things uh, unattended. A few, few weeds blowing around, but that's all right. We're, uh, we're going to get some, some yeast that's badly needed for our cider so that yeast will get it to work anyway. Um, one other thing we've done is we've uh, cut the bottom out of the five gallon bucket. This is our measuring cup for our, our, uh, for our apple puree. This is all that we can really handle when we get to, the, to some point. We'll, uh, so basically, we'll just move right on into it. Um, we're just about ready for this step. These are uh, your, just your standard flour sack, flour sack towels. The best strainer in the world. Once again, one of the best ideas we've found. They're cheap. They last well. We've done every. Every kind of uh, uh, strainer that we can find, and you know, just want to make sure we run right back through this again. Once again, we've uh, we picked our own apples, as you can see. Sorry for the wind, folks. We picked a bunch of our own apples here. And you can see we dice them up and cut them up into about quarters, which seems to be just fine. We're not really worried about the seeds or anything. There are a few here that we had didn't weren't great, but they. Um, so we cut some bad parts out, but a lot of a lot of apple cider makers they don't even take out the, the bad stuff. They say that it's all good. Get your lid anyway. Lid. Lid. So I'm sorry about the lid. You can see, folks, we're grinding these apples. That apple puree and the fresher apples are are just a little. A little uh, wider, but that does take a few minutes and that kind of turns brown. There's nothing wrong with that. I'll run, run it. Keep a bucket under here. In case anything drops out, I'll run a little apple juice apple through there. Um, so here we go with our little measuring device once again. I've laid that down. Sorry, right, folks, the tools doing a little few adjustments earlier. Anyway, um, so here we are with uh, our measuring device. We're just going to put the apples in there. There's seeds and you name it, everything in here. We like it that way. That's the good stuff there. Stems. And, uh, you know, we. this is the first year we've been really, really, really careful about the uh, apples that we selected, they say that it doesn't matter if they're bruised or whatever. And part of the preparation of your apples also is letting them age once you once you harvest it. Um, we just box ours up and try to keep them in a cool cool place, and, and uh, it's called sweating them. They in the years past, we spread them out on a tarp, so none of them were touching. Um, heard that was the right thing to do, but I don't know that you could do that in any large quantity. Okay, so here we are making apple cider. We've made our apple puree, and this is our, as I explained before, this is our super duper uh, apple puree cake measuring device. Um, you know, it looks like about three inches tall. I don't know. It's just perfect for the cake we're going to make for this. We'll put in our apple puree. Just to make sure it's just about right. Even. Um, lightly tie the, the flour sack to the just simple flour sack kitchen towels. Um, just very, very lightly. Really, it's just to give you something to hang on to here. Press. Set it down. So as you can see, we've already got juice um, coming out. There we go. Right, this is good juice. Just want to kind of center that really nicely in the center. Um, so you'll be able to get a hold of those tails. Take one of our discs that we've uh, separating discs. Just set it right down on top. So we're going to have to make a couple of these.
We make apple cakes, discs of apples. Um, it's just been said in some of our research, we found that uh, it's just a technique that was used back in the day by the early apple pressers. Um, they separate these discs, each with a, a wooden plate. Um, in here right now, we've got probably one, two, three, maybe four levels of apples. Um, give us a little more stroke. As you can see, we've brought it up. We lock her down. Um, even before we've begun to press, you can see there's been a considerable amount of apple juice already provided. buy in the store. It's uh, kind of got that golden brown, Just it just looks so creamy and, and it really is when you taste it. Um, it just tastes buttery, buttery and sweet. Um, it doesn't take a, a lot of pressure. You want to be, uh, you want to be patient about putting the pressure on and letting the apples relax. So we'll, I'll tighten her down a little bit and I'll we'll just let it sit there and relax. And apples just release their, uh, their nice creamy goodness. It's, it's sweet and sugary and as you can see, it's got no preservatives. It's coming straight from the apple. No chemicals, no additives. No added sugars. I will eventually. We'll put we'll put the torque on this thing. Um, but here for at first, you just want to kind of inch it down and inch it down. And that's one of the reasons we built this box so that we can get to stand up here and I'll you know eventually I'll start cranking it down pretty good. Right now she's just uh, letting it go. So here we are. We're continuing to. Uh, Press our apples, things are getting pretty tight, getting down towards towards the bottom. Um, we probably compressed our apples probably 50%. This is going down inside. So, um, and now you can see I'm standing up here on this box that I built. You know, I could have built it a little bit bigger, I guess, but it stores well like this. So, um, once again, I'm, I'm cranking on it pretty good now. Um, We'll usually just let it uh, wait for a while and let it let it mellow. And what, I, what I'm going to do right now, I want to kind of take you on to the bottling process. So I'm going to release the pressure here. of your apples now we don't want dirty apples but one in the past we have always made special consideration and uh, we've washed our apples and 
brainwashed and blocked in, and we were told not to. Our research indicated that we shouldn't. Um, but maybe in a hard head, I indicated that we should. So, uh, we used to wash those apples. The problem with that was that we continued to run into a little issue of not being able to get proper fermentation out of it. It was just too clean. Um, what we found, what the research has indicated, that, you, that that white film on top of your apples, as long as it's not, uh, as long as they're organic, as long as it's not, they're not covered in, in some kind of pesticide or, or uh, non-organic uh, fertilizers and things like that, you're just better off not washing your apples. And if it's not that, because because your apples will have a film on them, and that is yeast. And in the past, when I've tried to uh, to make uh, hard cider, I've had to add yeast, beer yeast. And there's been a few kinds. Of, I've done a little research on a few different kinds of yeasts. Um, some people say they have something that's that's good for apple cider. I don't know if I agree. Definitely don't use champagne yeast. They've blown up bottles, um, and it just gets too dry, or all the sugar. So here is uh, here's a nice, beautiful bottle of apple cider. So the other thing we're going to do is we've got an airlock here. Um, we have a friend that wants to make some apple cider vinegar. Once again, we've washed everything really well. This is a typical airlock you can get from any brewing store. I've washed it off. I need to fill it up with water. I fill it up. What this does is make sure that uh, uh, it keeps the, the carbon dioxide inside the yeah, bottle. It pushes all the oxygen out, and uh, the fermentation process eats all the botulism and everything else, and uh, you end up with a nice situation. As the bugs start to work and it starts to bubble, push out all the options that we've had. It'll just continue to ferment until it turns into hard cider, apple cider vinegar, or just apple cider in just a couple of hours. Or I mean, this is delicious. It is nice, creamy, and bubbly. It's nice, and creamy, and smooth, uh, sugary. And as it starts to ferment, it'll get that little bit of a bite. So. It's going to start working right away and apple cider. So we've gone through the bottling process uh, and, and once again it's restated how important it is to keep everything really clean. Um, and now we're unloading our, you know, our apple grass. The layers of cake that we have in there are starting to come out. You can see the cake's really gone on there. Anyway, They just kind of come out in, the, in an apple cake. I don't know exactly what to do with them yet. They're, uh, I don't know if you had horses or, or livestock of any sort. They might be really good. A lot of fiber. And anyway, otherwise, we just kind of throw them to the chickens. And I don't know if they get eaten or not. But anyway, one of the things that we've done since uh, we last talked, we started scrubbing, scrubbing our stuff down, scrubbing off our grinder. Um, next step after we get done pressing the rest of these apples, we'll scrub everything down. But I can't stress how important it is to keep your equipment clean. Uh, we clean it before uh, we press and we clean it after we press. And that way it's always ready for the next year. And uh, ready to rock and roll. We, we boil down um, all the moving parts. and. and uh, it. I'm not sure how much further we can go with this process other than um, there are a number of things you can make from it. And the benefits are, are vast. Um, apple juice, uh, Thomas Jefferson used to say, that he was responsible for a long life. He had a growler every day 
Um, apple juice can turn into apple cider vinegar or apple cider. Um, and then from there you can take it to the next step and, and, and make apple cider vinegar or even um, hard cider. So, um, wonderful uses, vast uses, all the parts we use. or anything else I'd love to know if it's uh, if you could make a cake out of it. Not a whole lot of taste after you squeezed out all the sugar. But it's apples. <laughs>